My name is Sean Overton, and I'm turning this into a desert forest. Diane reached out to me from Moringa of America. She had the idea that if I plant a Miyawaki forest, that we'll be able to create an island of fertility in one of the best spots of the ranch. You look like you're dressed for the desert. Yeah. With some style, silk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 90s silk vintage shirt. Um, I brought these panels because it's what I had. Oh, wow. Because I thought it'd be strong to put around the plants. Oh, gosh, yeah. That will definitely do it. Kind of help keep the animals out. They're not getting in that. Yeah. I brought some uh, Moringa. Cool. And um, Candlestick Casilla. Um, Pride of Barbados. Oh. And a Mexican Petunia. I guess let's see where you want to plant. Yeah, let me take you on a tour. This is the check dam that we built to hold this road in place. And I haven't, this is my first time looking at it since we, uh, since we repaired it. Yeah. And you can see, like, I got to add some rocks here. Right. Um, but it held up pretty well. Yeah, you got some grasses coming And up. what I learned last year when we put this road in is this is the hot spot where if on the drone footage, you'll see a lot more green in this area, which yep. not hard to understand why. Yeah. Like you got all this stuff growing. Right. So I think this loose silt where we know we're gonna have decent runoff, but it's not crazy, is probably the ideal spot to put the Moringa. Okay. And we can support it, like, you know, if we just plant it around here where that acacia is growing, mm -hmm. they can start to reinforce themselves. So right here? I think this is the best spot because it's out of the road. Mm -hmm. it, you're, it's gonna get uh, whatever, if we get one or two more rain events, it'll give that Moringa a good blast. And we might even just think strategically, like this rock won't move. Mm -hmm. Put one, one of the moringas well, right there. So I have uh, three pieces of the panel, and I, so I was just going to make like a triangle yeah. with it. So I think if I make the small piece here and then to this way and then just plant all in here. Yeah, um, maybe, I think so. Um, fill it. I want to fill it with some some green material or, you know, whatever kind of material I can get my hands on. And then... Um, Maybe some some of the sand and some of my compost that I brought, and uh, see if we can get it to grow. Cool. We got some Mormon tea down here. Yeah, all oh, that really? ephedra. Yeah, it's right over here. Right here. Awesome! Wow, that's amazing. I'm cook up a little bit of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Happy for, or you'll be dead. One of the best. <laughs> well, I'll be happy and dead. Yeah, probably. Then you won't know. Yeah. Right oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, I love these things. Look at those things for. I had a nice plant of those in my house in my in Alpine, and it went away. And a couple of years went by, and all of a sudden, I had a bunch in my backyard. Really? It came back, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You don't always know what, exactly what sets them off, and then. Yeah, no, but I mean, you got the seed bank. It's here. Yeah. Yeah. For a lot of these things, all you need is some moisture. Exactly. But, and look at that, Grandma. That's doing amazing. I've never seen the grass stick green out here. Yeah, it looks good. Um, I also brought the sunflower, the wild sunflower seeds. Sweet, yeah. So I was thinking just sprinkling it in the... This the is the perfect spot for it, so yeah. That, uh, maybe keep some of it... Keep the birds off. Yeah, in the soil and not in the birds. But the birds will carry it and plant it someplace else. Yeah. They, they eat it, fertilize it, and poop it out for you. There you go. So uh, do you think I can... Oh, you can definitely get your truck down here. Okay, yeah, all yeah. the way? Yeah, I, okay. this is my... It goes all the way up to the top. Oh, okay. This is actually, I mean, not a great road, but it's a road. It's, well, I think as I've good been as what on we've been over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is actually improved. <laughs> Ideally, a Miyawaki forest would be 10 by 10, but with the materials on hand and really wanting to protect the life inside, we wanted to go overkill and do the best job we could with the plants that we did establish. I am excited to try this because one, I got to watch ever, all the stuff that Diane brought out here and get the experience of actually making it. But also, it's a chance to experiment because it is in the bottom of the wash, and I do have rain coming, and I'm not sure how it's going to hold up. Okay, I hope I can... This is going to give it a really good start. Uh, you did it too! I oh, did it too! Oh, sorry, should I pull up? No, 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 It's we're done unloading. It's Yeah. You know what I forgot to grab was the rebar wire. Did I you have wire. Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay. This is actually shelving 
Is it really? Material for the food industry, I believe. All right. So these can these boxes we can also lay down somewhere if we need to. wire i brought two i had to cut off some stuff so i brought cool but you don't have any electric out here i uh, know <laughs> not with that not enough to power that okay so i think i'd like to figure out kind of where we're going to do this yeah and then draw a line i feel like that's going to be what do you think the water is going to be coming in right through here. All the water is going to be here. Okay. So this is the best spot. Oh, so you think go coming this way? I, yeah, I think it's basically just if we keep it in a channel. Uh-huh. Because um, it'll build up behind the rock and all that. When it's really streaming, uh -huh. you'll get the water level up. So it'll help flood from here to here. Uh -huh. And then that way we get the soil fully saturated and they get as much water as they can handle. Well, um, I don't want them to sit in the water. Let me turn this a little bit and then come this way so yeah and we can always add rocks to the channel to get the water up you know better than i do what you want the water to do well these so these plants like water but they don't want wet seed okay that for very long okay so so the soil up where we're digging the sandbag foundation is uh -huh. still moist uh -huh. so what we can do is just dig a little test hole and we'll see how wet it is okay as night too you can see there's organic matter in here yeah that's great I can already tell it's wet. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. great. So that's right, that's too that's after two weeks of a really heavy rain. Yeah. Is that too wet? No, I think that's perfect. Okay. Yeah. What I'd like to do is um, take some of this and put it in there and smash it down. Yeah. Maybe take some of the soil that's loose enough to get and put it on top and then put the compost. Okay. And then maybe that, um, the plastic, because that's going to help, well, the... Oh, the sun fabric, or the weed mat? Weed barriers, yeah. yeah. Put that down, that's going to help it stay warm, and then plant, you know, cut the holes, and then just plant in that. I am following your lead. Okay. I just want to see, um, how far out it's going to go, just to get an idea of what we're looking at here in the air, that would be the to do it. Okay, so and that's gonna catch water too. Yeah, it will. Just slow it down and spread it. Maybe we need to put that long one there. Yeah, I think so. And then put the short one over here. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, that other panel's gonna fall down. Yes. Just fold it. Just push it. Push it back. Do that one. Here we are. I think we should um, and then, uh, go all the way. Yes. Uh, I think we should drag this a little bit. And that way we can keep this guy. Oh yeah, there you go. I don't know. I'd probably what do you take pull? it back a little bit. Something like that? Yeah ish okay all right gives me an idea all right and this is obviously going to be the weak joint mm -hmm. so we could put one, a t-post here there. and then two the two t-posts mm -hmm. over there all right all right so we can just lay it down yeah right here okay, i'm going to fill this with as much of this as i can just stuff like this yeah free uh free mulch mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like all of this Come in. You 
You want to cut some of these, or just uh, cut the, the acacia back? Yeah, and, and then put it in. Oh yeah, yeah. Right there's the, the shears. All right. This is chop and drop. Yeah. Well, he's not cutting it too. Much. Not very good chopper. No. It's not a, for not for small limbs. No. This is more the uh, yank and pull. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's working. Or if there's a better plant. Oh, got something flowering down there. Yeah, I don't know what that white flower is. It's, it's kind of nice. These desert flowers are amazing. They just... A little bit of rain and here they come. I love it. So right now we're making a mulch pile. Okay. Um, so we're transplanting these little potted plants. But if you leave them exposed to the soil, they're going to do really poorly. Uh, we're going to give them every chance that they can to thrive. Which means that you pile organic matter, which will break down really quickly when you feed them. And then we're going to put some weed mat over it. That's more for temperature control. These soils are hypothermic, which means that they'll get well over 80 degrees in, in the blood blazing sun. So we want to keep the, the roots as cool as possible in the summer and as warm as possible in the winter. And the reason that we're starting here is that we have all this vegetation already naturally growing. And we're in the bottom of the wash where there's a large concentration of silt and the soil is much deeper. So what we're trying to strike here is a balance between giving the roots enough depth that they can actually thrive but we also want the water that's coming down from all these water cactus that we've made. We want them to be able to get down there and access it. And once we have this pile of mulch, we'll mix this all together, add some external stuff that Diane brought, then put the plants in there, then the weed mat, put a cage around it so the rabbits and the deer and everything out here can't eat, or eat it until it's actually healthy. Uh, and then eventually we'll take down that paneling and we should have a thriving micro forest right here. The reason I selected that particular spot is I think it's the best balance between water availability, water manageability, and soil depth. Most of the species that Diane brought are relatively deep rooted. And that's one spot where I've already done the earthworks where the soil actually is deep. The water is manageable because there's only about one or two acres that's draining into that particular place. So there's only so much water that can pass through there, but it's enough water that when it's flowing through, it should fully hydrate all of those plants and give them the best opportunity to succeed. So we stockpiled all the organic matter. And so now we just need to shovel all that silt in there. Okay. Looks like from here, where do you think from? I think honestly where that panel's laying down, this little one, I'll 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 take the shovel and I'll just check it over onto uh the organic matter. But we'll move so this. You put, oh, okay. And what can There's already a, quite a bit of organic stuff in here. Yeah, that looks Feel and it's juice? and it's already moist too. Yeah. Good. So what is all that black stuff? Uh, this is compost from my compost pile at the house. Cool. And I brought with me uh, special grub worms. These these things are huge. Yeah, they're gigantic. <laughs> um, there's also earthworms in here. Uh, hopefully they'll make it through the desert in summertime. I see some other little bugs just crawling Oh yeah, everywhere. there's tons of bugs. Um, there's an earthworm. Um, but this is just uh, my mostly Coffee grounds, eggs, you know, kitchen scraps. Good stuff. Yeah, all the good stuff. Um, lot, I don't know what some of these bugs are. Yeah. They, bugs are good. Bugs are good. Yeah. So, so we've got the, the local organic matter on the bottom. Right. And I shoveled all that silt. And then now you've added this. Some, some compost to help loosen the soil and give it a little more structure and some, let it uh, get some oxygen in the soil more and and nutrients so do we leave it in layers like that or do we mix it together i was gonna mix it a little bit i was about to grab the little rake over here yeah the tie in there i know what you're talking about the one that we flipped upside down 
And then I also, I'm green. I also brought some earthworm castings. Nice. Yeah. So we'll mix, mix that in too. Yes. I'm kind of leaving this high right here so we can um, put our the fence. fence up. Yeah. And it's not, you know, seed bed worthy, but I think with the soil around the plants themselves and what we've got here, I think we've got enough to plant in. And then, um, so, we'll, uh, Yeah. Some black gold right there. Also, um, brought some uh, uh, mycorrhizal inoculant. Oh, cool. Yeah. To bring in the. Get the fungi going. The fungus, yeah. But I th it got wet. So that's part of why I'm dumping this $20 bag of. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why go for good enough when you can go for overkill? So, oh, but mix that up. No, oh, that's where that is. I got to put my spoons in there. <laughs> the the worm castings alone would make this stuff grow. But that is good enough. This is um, a mix of minerals and nutrients. That they're ag it's actually um, hydroponic nutrients oh. that we use. Um, we Leland send it just as a hedge our bed a little bit. Like making a salad. Yeah, pretty much making soil salad. Maybe that's the name of the episode. There you go. And we may have to move some of this around. Now I think I need to, yeah. We're gonna be somebody's dinner this evening, the grub worm. Okay. Let's see what this is like. See, I need to open it, I think. Here. So what way does it go? Well, I'm shiny side up or down? Shiny side up. Okay. But I think I need to pull it this way. And it's doubled over. And then we'll have to cut it. Okay. We weren't sure how big we were going to do with this. Well, too much is better than too little. I hate all that racket. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I thought you said you were a city boy. There you go. There's the city boy. <laughs> This one is um, uh, kind of a a choice that um, we're just trying out because it's a Rose of Sharon, and the the reason Leland picked it to bring out here is because uh, he found it after uh, sitting for several weeks without water, and it was still doing well. That's a good sign. Well, yeah, if you can leave it in this uh, 110 degree heat wave we've been having, mm -hmm. and it's still growing. So what I'd like to do, I think, is put some rocks around. Cool. Well, I'll fetch you some rocks. They don't have many rocks, though. Yeah. <laughs> We're suffering from a giant rock shortage. Lost my 
Coming along. Yeah, getting there. You want to switch? Sure. I was thinking maybe put this since this has a, a, good, a fair amount of soil in it already. Right. Put this here. Okay. Um, and then some of the smaller ones where that's deeper. Cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, let's we'll put it out of the way for now, and then. Yeah. Why don't I get back there and fill in the stuff over there first? Okay. Oh, that's a good idea. I think like right here. Oh, yeah. that is nice and spongy. Look yeah, at that. so that's. And I'll put this here so it gets all that shade. The little babies probably. Oh, this one, I think it's gonna make it. We, I missed it watering one day, but it's still green. Okay. Is this like tomatoes? They should break up the root clump a little bit? No. No. I meant to tell you that. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, the moringa, uh, especially. Don't bother it? Don't mess with the roots, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad I asked. Yeah, thank you. Everything else, it is fine to do that. But the moringa um, has a very sensitive root, and it um, makes a real deep tap root. Okay. And it, it doesn't like to be disturbed. So, do I need to dig this deeper? I think you're good. I think if you can reach in and kind of pull some of the dirt from the sides, the sides and volcano it. Yeah. And then you can pull the flat back. Well, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. That'll. There we go. That'll. Yeah, it's flat. Perfect. Yeah. This guy got get some good shade. Yeah. Get him up and going. Okay. And then I could probably put another moringa here. Okay. <laughs> Got a little bit of a yeah. Are you gonna need rocks around all the plants or to cover the entire? Just around the plants mainly. We get blasted with sun in this area, like in, especially at this angle. Yeah. This goes exactly due south. So this is one of the few spots where shade is good. Yeah. Shade is a huge advantage. And it's kind of fun when I look at the local plant life. Like you'll notice that certain species will only grow on the east facing slopes. Oh yeah. Some of them will only grow on a north facing slope. Like uh, there's a really cool plant called a resurrection fern. Oh yeah. And uh, I barely have any north facing slopes, but where I do, they're growing. And what's cool about a resurrection fern is it'll go 40 years without any water. Oh wow. And, uh, and then you pour water on it and it looks dead as dead could be and it'll unfurl in about an hour. Oh, wow. And green. That's amazing. Yeah, you're doing way better than I was doing. Well, I'm trying to treating it like surgery. Yeah, it is I'm a little bit. You I'm can... terrified of hurting this moringa. Yeah. Is that this technique? Yeah, if you cut an X, then, okay. and then you can like fold the flap back. There you oh, go. yeah. Oh, that'll work too. Yeah, I like that, that's good. And then you can reach in a little easier right. to get the soil around it. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. It's like y'all know what you're doing. Right there. It's got like its own little raised bed there with the stick. Yeah. Yeah. How good that rosemary would do out here. I think it would well. well, especially in this little spot where we yeah. added all these nutrients. Yeah, even this little bit of shade's gonna. Yeah. It's really gonna help. Good. Yeah, I think so. We don't even need the other T-post. No, I don't think so. It's not going to add much. Mm 
It's just gonna make for an awkward angle anyway. Mm -hmm. I think that that 30 degree angle is pretty good. We uh, okay. So what do you think is a realistic expectation for the end of the year? Say we get one more good rain. In the, in a week. Mm hmm. I mean, I'll be happy to see two plants. Yeah. What do you think? I'd be ecstatic to see two plants. It's two more than I got now. Yeah. But um, we gave it everything it needs, except water. Except water. But even then, like I have my four gallon spray pack. I might be worth coming down here and giving them a little blast. Yeah, before you go. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Because I did water them last night. So they, they should be okay for a while. And I think this is like, because we have such a concentration of nutrients, mm -hmm. it'll be worth giving them a little blast whip from the spray pack. And then when I come back, it's just one of the chores that I come down here and yeah. give them a little water until they go dormant. Yeah. This one should st start uh, putting buds on. And then when you get some seed pods off of this, you're good. Okay. Once, yeah, once those seed pods go, then it'll, it should replant itself. Awesome. Yeah. So, and then, yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> the wrong hand. Whatever. Yeah. So that's. I'm praying for him. Well, thank you very much for oh, doing this. Welcome. I really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah I appreciate you. Um, Moringaofamerica.com. I'm glad you got the plug. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, you can I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you to give the plug because you yeah. haven't said anything about it yet. Yeah, we think it's such a great plant it it the more we learn about it the 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 more we l need to learn about it there it does so much and it and it's creating such a great community and um and it's a plant that we need in this world the more and more every day so they don't i'm hoping that it likes its new desert home <laughs> we'll find out I'm really excited to have a mini forest going because I don't know why it didn't occur to me to try establishing one in that particular spot. I think it's the best way to honor the desert forest vision. There are spots of the property where there, there ain't gonna be a forest, but there are unique locations where a forest is possible because of the soil depth. Where I'm standing now, the soil's probably a, a foot and a half to two feet deep. There's no way most trees are gonna be able to live on this. But in Cottonwood Canyon, which I'm gonna film an episode about, that used to be a forest. And in these wash bottoms where the soil is deep enough, I think we can get interesting tree species going eventually. But at this point, I will take whatever I can get to grow down there. Thank you for watching.